We always kind of say we shouldn't have a story, but we should have a lore. There is a consistent narrative. The, the things that you see there are there for a reason. If there are buildings, they're there because a certain race built them and they look like that race has built them. And if you talk to aliens in the game, you'll get little touches of that. If you read some text on a monolith, you'll get, you know, it will be consistent with that. And that's lore to me, that's world building. I used to love space opera. I loved the grand scale stuff. I loved the kind of stuff that Larry Niven would do or people like Robert Heinlein. Well, the thing is with No Man's Sky, it's such a kind of comprehensive universe. I mean, I guess almost by definition, a universe has to be comprehensive, but it's got such scope that in our early discussions, we, we came to the conclusion that you could set all kinds of stories within that universe. You could write virtually any kind of science fiction, exploration, battle, trading, love story, anything you wanted. Much as I'm thrilled to go and see a new game and to get the inside scoop on it, because I am a fan, you know, just think I'm seeing something that other people haven't seen and I've got inside knowledge. They seem to be equally thrilled to meet me because I'd done a lot of things that they'd like. Watchmen, obviously, one of the pre preeminent things there. I floated the idea of, you know, maybe we could do a comic or, or a graphic novel or something and they seemed to think that was um, a really good idea and first of all we explored doing it as a standalone item but then we thought it would be a really good way just to get our feet wet to do something that could be included with the game that, that would add value to that. I've always had a soft spot for old games when you used to buy them and they would come with like a booklet. I liked the idea of that for No Man's Sky, of giving people a little bit of the flavour of the universe and kind of help build out the world a little bit. I chose to tell a story that was a kind of small adventure about a trader with a very valuable cargo and what becomes of the cargo because that trading aspect was one part of the game. So it's a lot of flying about in spaceships and a bit of humour, I think. And it's worked really well because in this booklet that's going to be with the game, James Swallow, who wrote a, um, a text story, uh, wrote a more visceral, internal, uh, very gripping and engaging story of one particular character. I connect very strongly with visual imagery. And I think the look of No Man's Sky was the thing that really sort of struck me when I, when I saw it the first time. Because it had that look like all of my favourite pulp sci-fi covers come to life. And immediately, when I saw that very first trailer, I, I thought, I've got to play this. I, I want to go to this place. I want to wander around there and, and, you know, and see a little of it. And it was just, it was inspiring. It's been great to have Dave doing these illustrations to sort of, you know, bookend my story. We've, we've done something in a way that's kind of similar to the old sort of pulp sci-fi magazines like, you know, Galaxy Magazine and Astounding Stories and all those kind of things. Whether you'd have a, a text story and you'd have these kind of great black and white illustrations. And having those two things married together, I think, again, it's all of this stuff is reaching back to the to the, to the lore and the sense of the world that, that these, this science fiction has come from. And it's, it's fun to explore that. So what I've done is, is it's a survival story. It's about a character who's um, shipwrecked on a planet uh, with some unpleasant alien species uh, chasing after them. And uh, we've got the, the sentinels that you've seen in the game as well. And it's all about this character just basically trying to fix their ship and get off the planet. But it's very much done from an internal viewpoint and made it very, very personal. And I felt like I was trying to explore that world and explore that sort of texture. What's been really fun with James and with Dave is actually just showing them the game. Especially like people who have such a love of sci-fi and such a background in it. But also what's happened is them working on the fiction, um, which is just kind of set in our universe. Actually, lots of the questions that they ask, you suddenly think, well, we either don't know that for sure or we haven't like locked it down or right, we need to lock this down. Like, how does this work? How does you know, and it's, it's crazy things, it's like, how does the landing gear of a ship work? And suddenly James Swallow will ask you that, and you're like, oh, I haven't thought about that. You know, but I should. I'm not sure even I know the whole story yet, 
But I do like the idea of, of adventures happening in a universe that has a history. You know, that you're not really the first people who ever flew around this universe. So I like that idea of, of trying to piece together a mystery as well. You know, not only to physically explore, but intellectually to piece together a mystery. I think there's definitely a huge breadth of stories to tell in No Man's Sky. It is a systemic game because it is about you interacting with the environment and the characters and there's no sort of hardcore narrative that says you must do this and you must do this and you must do this. What's unique about that is this is something that games can do that, that no other sort of form of storytelling can, is you as a player can come in and you can build your own narrative and you might play that game for you know months or years, who knows how long. But at the end of your play of No Man's Sky, you will have told a story that will be unique to you. And that I think that that is, that is incredible. PS4, for the players.